Alcohol Advertising, Wikipedia Article Audio Alcohol advertising is the promotion of alcoholic beverages by alcohol producers through a variety of media. Along with tobacco advertising, alcohol advertising is one of the most highly regulated forms of marketing. Some or all forms of alcohol advertising is banned in some countries. There have been some important studies about alcohol advertising published, such as J.P. Nelson's in 2000. Scientific research, health agencies and universities have, over the decades, been able to demonstrate a correlation between alcohol beverage advertising and alcohol consumption, however. It has not been proven that alcohol advertising causes higher consumption rather than merely reflecting greater public demand. Many commentators suggest that effective alcohol campaigns only increase a producer's market share and also brand loyalty. Target Marketing Malt Liquor The intended audience of the alcohol advertising campaigns have changed over the years with some brands being specifically targeted towards a particular demographic. Some drinks are traditionally seen as a male drink, particularly beers and whiskies, while others are drunk by females. Some brands have allegedly been specifically developed to appeal to people that would not normally drink that kind of beverage. These ads may contribute to underage consumption and binge drinking. In 2011 a study found that 23% of 12th graders had binge drank in the past two weeks, this figure doubled for kids in college. Use of alcohol before the brain fully develops can alter or negatively affect the development of the brain. One area in which the alcohol industry has faced criticism and tightened legislation is in their alleged targeting of young people. Central to this is the development of Alcopop's sweet tasting, brightly colored drinks with names that may appeal to a younger audience. However, numerous government and other reports have failed to support that allegation. There have been several disputes over whether alcohol advertisements are targeting teens. There happens to be heavy amounts of alcohol advertising that appears to make drinking fun and exciting. Alcohol advertisements can be seen virtually anywhere, they are especially known for sponsoring sporting events, concerts, magazines, and they are found anywhere on the internet. Most of the vendors' websites require an age of 21 to enter, but there is no restriction besides simply entering a birth date. With the catchy slogans, the idea that drinking is trendy, and no mention of the negative side of excessive use such advertising could be very harmful. A study done by the American Journal of Public Health concluded that Boston train passengers between the ages of 11 and 18 saw an alcohol-related advertisement every day. There have been studies similar to this, which supports the allegation that underage consumption of alcohol is in correlation with the exposure of alcohol ads. In response, many cities have recognized the effect of alcohol-related ads on adolescents and in some cities these advertisements have been banned on public transportation. It is difficult to make definite allegations regarding youth exposure to these types of advertisements but it is necessary to find ways in which these allegations may be limited. The National Household Survey on Drug Abuse reports the rates of binge alcohol use in 2008 were 1.5% among 12 or 13 years old, 6.9% among 14 or 15 years old, 17.2% among 16 or 17 years old, 33.7% among persons aged 18 to 20. In 2009, the rates for each group of underage alcohol usage increased by a fourth. According to 2001 College Alcohol Study, 
continuous alcohol promotions and advertisements including lowering prices on certain types of alcohol on a college campus have increased the percentage of alcohol consumption of that college community. Alcohol advertising on college campuses have also shown to increase binge drinking among students. However, it is concluded that the consistency of these special promotions and ads could also be useful in reducing binge drinking and other related drinking problems on campus. Among adolescents Research clearly indicates that, in addition to parents and peers, alcohol advertising and marketing significantly affect youth decisions to drink. While many factors may influence an underage person's drinking decisions, including among other things parents, peers and the media, there is reason to believe that advertising also plays a role. Advertising around the world Parents and peers substantially affect youth decisions to drink. However, Research clearly indicates that alcohol advertising and marketing also have a significant effect by influencing youth and adult expectations and attitudes, and helping to create an environment that promotes underage drinking. Even though people these days must put themselves into that situation, David H. Jernigan underlines how more than 15% of 12-year-olds will be likely to create the situation where youth are more likely per capita to see the magazine than adults over 21 years, the legal drinking age in the United States. The target market for malt liquor in the United States has been among the African American and Hispanic populations in cities. Advertisers use themes of power and sexual dominance to appeal to customers. Critics have objected to ads targeting this segment of the population, which suffers disproportionately high rates of alcohol-related illness and poor access to medical care. United States Peter Anderson and his colleagues performed longitudinal studies and concluded that alcohol advertising and promotion increases the likelihood that adolescents will start to use alcohol, and to drink more if they are already using alcohol. Elizabeth D. Waiters, Andrew J. Treno, and Joel W. Grubess discussions with a sample of youth, ages 9-15, support this claim. They found that these youth saw the purpose of beer commercials is to urge people to buy the product based on not only its quality, but also on its relationship to sexual attractiveness. They see the attractive young adults drink beer to personally rewarding ends and the youth-oriented music and are influenced to drink alcohol. Asia the World Health Organization has specified that the advertising and promotion of alcohol needs to be controlled. In September 2005, the WHO Euro region adopted a framework for alcohol policy for the region. This has five ethical principles which includes all children and adolescents have the right to grow up in an environment protected from the negative consequences of alcohol consumption and to the extent possible, from the promotion of alcoholic beverages. Europe Cross-border television advertising within the European Union was previously regulated by the 1989 Television Without Frontiers Directive, a harmonization measure designed to remove barriers to international trade as part of the common market. Article 15 of this directive sets out the restrictions on alcohol advertising. This article on alcohol advertising restrictions is implemented in each EU country largely through the self-regulatory bodies dealing with advertising. Responsible Drinking Campaigns the EU Law TV Without Frontiers Directive has subsequently been expanded to cover new media formats such as digital television. Now called the Audiovisual Media Services Directive, the provisions regarding restrictions on alcohol advertising are laid out in Article 22 and are identical to the above. 
Some countries, such as France, Norway, Russia, Ukraine, Myanmar, Sri Lanka, and Kenya have banned all alcohol advertising on television and billboard. In the United States, Spirits Advertising has self-regulatory bodies that create standards for the ethical advertising of alcohol. The special concern is where advertising is placed. Currently, the standard is that alcohol advertisements can only be placed in media where 70% of the audience is over the legal drinking age. Alcohol advertising's creative messages should not be designed to appeal to people under the age of 21, for example, using cartoon characters as spokespeople is discouraged. Advertising cannot promote brands based on alcohol content or its effects. Advertising must not encourage irresponsible drinking. Another issue in media placement is whether media vendors will accept alcohol advertising. The decision to accept an individual ad or a category of advertising is always at the discretion of the owner or publisher of a media outlet. In 1991, U.S. Surgeon General Antonio Novello criticized alcoholic beverage companies for unabashedly targeting teenagers with sexual imagery cartoons and rock and rap music in television and print ads 1135 the federal trade commission has conducted investigations of possible targeting to those under the age of 21 however its investigations and that of scholars have not found evidence of such targeting Concerns exist that irresponsible advertising practices or pushing the envelope with audience composition may lead to permanent legislation governing the advertising of beverage alcohol. Sponsorship in Sport In Malaysia, alcohol advertising on radio and televisions was outlawed in 1995. On Malaysian television, Alcohol advertising is not shown before 10 p.m. and during Malay language programs. However, non-Malay newspapers and magazines are allowed to continue alcohol advertising. Supermarkets and hypermarkets have also been criticized for advertising alcohol products on trolleys, which is controversial because Islam is the state religion of the country. After the ban of alcohol advertising on Malaysian radio and televisions, they continued to build the brands with sponsorships of concerts and entertainment events. Campaigns In Singapore, alcohol advertisement is not allowed to be shown during programs intended for children and young persons and during Malay language programs. Results from one study indicate that beer advertisements are a significant predictor of an adolescent's knowledge, preference, and loyalty for beer brands, as well as current drinking behavior and intentions to drink. Television advertising changes attitudes about drinking. Young people report more positive feelings about drinking and their own likelihood to drink after viewing alcohol ads. The alcohol industry spends $2 billion per year on all media advertising, the beer brewing industry itself spent more than $770 million on television ads and $15 million on radio ads in 2000. In Indonesia, alcohol advertising was legal in the 1990s, but have since banned. In Hong Kong, Alcohol advertising is not allowed to be shown during family viewing hour programs. It may not be aimed specifically at minors or, in particular, depict minors consuming these beverages, it shall not link the consumption of alcohol to enhanced physical performance or to driving, it shall not create the impression that the consumption of alcohol contributes towards social or sexual success. It shall not claim that alcohol has therapeutic qualities or that it is a stimulant, a sedative, or a means of resolving personal conflicts. It shall not encourage immoderate consumption of alcohol or present abstinence or moderation in a negative light. 
it shall not place emphasis on high alcoholic content as being a positive quality of the beverages. In the Philippines, alcohol advertising is allowed. Alcohol warning is also shown in the end of the advertisement explaining with the words, drink moderately. In 2012, the warning was changed to drink responsibly. Guinness Absolute Alcohol Sponsorship in Sport In Thailand, alcohol advertisements are still allowed, but must accompany it by a warning message. See Alcohol Advertising in Thailand In Sri Lanka, public advertising on alcohol is banned totally since 2006. In South Korea, Public advertising on alcohol is only allowed after 10 p.m. In Russia, advertising alcohol products is banned from almost all media since January 2013. Before that, alcohol advertising was restricted from using images of people drinking since mid-2000s. In Sweden, since 2010 advertisements are legal for wine and beer, but not on television and radio. Non-periodic magazines are allowed to advertise alcoholic beverages above 15%. These advertisements must contain warnings, but which are worded less strongly than the warnings on tobacco products, for example, avoid drinking while pregnant, as opposed to smoking kills. These rules were introduced into the law 2010 based on the provisions of an EU directive, provisionally applied by Swedish newspapers since 2005. Before that alcohol advertisements were forbidden, except for class 1 beer or light beer. Such advertisements were common, as stronger beers which shared a name with advertised light beers, may have benefit from this. In Finland, Parliament of Finland decided to ban alcohol outdoor advertising, except during sport events. This new law is going to take place in January 2015. In the United Kingdom, the Advertising Standards Authority have banned several ads that don't comply with the restrictions in the EU directive. In September 2017, Facebook announced it would allow users to hide all alcohol advertisements. The move is debated within the UK, as Alcohol Research UK Group welcomed the change, while the Alcohol Standards Authority said the UK already had some of the strictest rules in the world. There have been various campaigns to help prevent alcoholism, underage drinking, and drunk driving. The Portman Group, an association of leading drinks producers in the UK, are responsible for various such campaigns. These include responsible drinking, drink driving, proof of age cards. The Drink Aware campaign, for example, aims to educate people about how to drink sensibly and avoid binge drinking. The website address is displayed as part of all of the adverts for products made by members of the group. The Century Council, financially supported by a group of alcoholic beverage distillers in the United States, promotes responsible decision-making regarding drinking or non-drinking and works to reduce all forms of irresponsible consumption. Since its founding in 1991, it has invested over $175 million in its programs. Many campaigns by the alcoholic beverage industry that advocate responsible drinking presuppose that drinking for recreational purposes is a positive activity and reinforce this idea as an example of sensible consumption. Persons who believe alcohol can never simultaneously be used sensibly and recreationally would obviously disagree with the focus or direction of these campaigns. A controversial anti-drunk driving advertisement in South Africa has threatened the public with rape in prison. 
the campaign is still underway with no reported complaints to the advertising standards authorities. The sponsorship of sporting events and sports people is banned in many countries. For example, the primary club competition in European Rugby Union, the Heineken Cup, is called the Age Cup in France because of that country's restrictions on alcohol advertising. However, such sponsorship is still common in other areas, such as the United States, although such sponsorship is controversial as children are often a target audience for major professional sports leagues. Alcohol advertising is common in motor racing competitions, and is particularly prominent in NASCAR and IndyCar. One major example of this was the Bush series, sponsored by a brand of beer sold by Anheuser-Busch. That sponsorship, which started in the series conversion from a national late model sportsman races around the country to the present touring format in 1982, ended after 2007. Budweiser the best-known Anheuser-Busch brand, has sponsored IndyCar drivers such as Mario Andretti, Bobby Rahal, and Paul Tracy, as well as NASCAR Cup drivers such as Terry Labonte, Neil Bonnet, Daryl Waltrip, Bill Elliott, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Casey Connie, and currently Kevin Harvick. Meanwhile, Miller has sponsored Al Unser, Danny Sullivan, Bobby Rahal, Rusty Wallace, Kurt Busch, and currently Brad Keselowski. Furthermore, NASCAR mandates drivers under 21 not be permitted to wear any alcohol-branded sticker on their cars. In cases with below drinking age drivers, a specialized Coors Pole Award, 21 means 21 sticker is placed on such drivers' cars. One team, Petty Enterprises, refuses to participate in alcohol advertising and forfeits all alcohol monies and bonuses. For distilled spirits, teams must run a responsible drinking sticker clearly visible on the car. For Jack Daniels, the theme is Pace Yourself drink responsibly, and includes on NASCAR's website a waving yellow flag warning drinkers. For Crown Royal, the television ads feature the car with the slogan Be a Champion, drink responsibly and it acting as a pace car to drivers, warning them of responsibility. Jim Beam has radio ads and NASCAR mandated statements about alcohol control. None of the three however, is a full-time sponsor, as they alternate sponsorship with other products unrelated to their firm on the car. Although tobacco companies have been the main source of financial backing in Formula One, some alcohol brands have also been associated with the sport. For example, Martini appears on the Williams F1 car while Johnny Walker has sponsored McLaren since 2006. Anheuser-Busch, being a conglomerate with non-alcoholic properties, complies with the French alcohol advertising ban in Formula One by placing their Busch Entertainment theme park logos where their Budweiser logo would appear on the Williams F1 car at races where alcohol advertising is banned and in Middle Eastern countries, where alcohol advertising is discouraged. A few companies, however, have added responsible drinking campaigns with their sponsorship notably the 1989-90 BTCC Ford Sierra RS500 of Tim Harvey and Lawrence Bristow, which was sponsored by Labatt. Throughout the two seasons, the car bore a please don't drink and drive message. Some stadiums, particularly in the U.S., bear the names of breweries or beer brands via naming rights arrangements, such as Bush Stadium, Coors Field, and Miller Park, those three venues are all in or near the cities of their headquarters. Diageo are a major sponsor of many sporting events through their various brands. For example, 
Johnny Walker sponsor the championship at Glen Eagles and Classic Golf Tournaments along with the Team McLaren Formula One car. Cricket is a sport with a large amount of alcohol sponsorship. The 2005 Ashes, for example, featured sponsorship hoardings by brands such as Red Stripe, Thwaites Lancaster Bomber and Wolf Blass Wines. In nations like India and Sri Lanka where alcoholic advertising is generally prohibited, those regulations are rounded with distillers offering clothing lines and sports equipment marked with one of their brands or separate soft drink or bottled water lines within tournaments such as the Indian Premier League and Test matches, such as United Spirits Limited S. McDowell's No. 1 and Perno Richard S. Royal Stag. Rugby Union also has a substantial amount of alcohol sponsorship. The All Blacks feature Stein Lager sponsorship prominently. The Scotland national team has a long-established relationship with the famous Grouse, a brand of Scotch whisky. Wales has a more recent relationship with the Brains Brewery and the Springboks of South Africa agreed for South African breweries to put the Lion Lager then, the Castle Lager brand on their shirt until 2004. Magners was the title sponsor of the Celtic League, the top competition in Ireland, Scotland and Wales, Guinness is the title sponsor of the Guinness Premiership, the top competition in England, and the beer brand Tuhi's New was the Australian sponsor of the Southern Hemisphere Super 14 competition through the 2006 season. Bund Abergrum is one of the sponsors of the Australia National Rugby Union team. Rugby League in Australia is sponsored by Victoria Bitter and Bund Abergrum. Guinness iconic stature can be attributed in part to its advertising campaigns. One of the most notable and recognizable series of adverts was created by S.H. Benson S. Advertising, primarily John Gilroy, in the 1930s and 1940s. Gilroy was responsible for creating posters which included such phrases such as Guinness for Strength, It's a Lovely Day for a Guinness, and most famously, Guinness is Good for You. The posters featured Gilroy's distinctive artwork and more often than not featured animals such as a kangaroo, ostrich, seal, lion, and notably a toucan, which has become as much a symbol of Guinness as the Trinity College harp. Guinness advertising paraphernalia attracts high prices on the collectible market. In a campaign reminiscent of viral marketing techniques, one advert quickly appeared as a screensaver distributed over the Internet. It was a simple concept, featuring Dublin actor Joe McKinney dancing around the drink while it was given time to settle. The accompanying music was released as a single and reached number one on the Irish charts and number two on the UK charts in May 1995. In Malaysia, Singapore, and Hong Kong, Guinness launched a $8 million advertising campaign using the fictional character of Adam King to promote the embodiment of Guinness as a man could be incredibly powerful. The advertising campaign was handled by advertising firm, Saatchi and Saatchi. In Africa, the character of Michael Power has been used since 1999 to boost sales. Today, Guinness principal television campaign in North America consists of limited animation commercials featuring two eccentric scientists in 19th century dress complementing one another's ideas as brilliant. Absolute Vodka is made in Sweden and was introduced to the United States in the year 1979. Its launch was a true challenge due to a variety of factors. Sweden was not perceived as a vodka-producing country, the bottle was very awkward for bartenders to use, and vodka was perceived as a cheap, tasteless drink. 
Absolute advertising campaign by TBWA exploited the shape of the bottle to create clever advertisements that caused people to become involved in the advertising, and the brand took off. Before Absolute, there were very few distinctions in the vodka category. Today there are regular, premium, and super premium vodkas each at different price points and qualities. Flavored vodkas have become ubiquitous and may be found commonly at regular and premium price points. Sport has been suggested to be one of the primary, if not the dominant, medium for the promotion of alcohol and drinking to the general population with the majority of advertising spend and advertising placement occurring in sport. Work from New Zealand and Australia shows that sponsorship of sports participants or athletes is associated with more hazardous drinking, with calls from the UK, Australia and New Zealand, for bans on alcohol industry sponsorship and advertising in sport.